Good afternoon, everyone. I see that some of you are jumping on early, which is great. I'm going to give some more of the attendees a few more minutes to jump on, and then I will pass it over to Craig. Like the announcer said, you currently are on mute, but you should be able to hear us. Hey, Craig, you can everyone a little bit of a wave. It appears that they can all see you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I didn't either. Um, but we're just going to give everyone a few more minutes to jump on here. We're a little bit early, so we'll start right. soon. Good. Okay, it is five o'clock right now. Um, I'm gonna give everyone maybe another minute or so. I see a couple people jumping on here still, so we'll start soon. Okay, I think we're going to start right now. So, Craig, I will give you full access to the screen right now. Everyone, welcome, Craig. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out here. Happy Friday. Day's almost over. I'll try to make it quick and painless. Uh, introduce myself. I'm Craig Peterson. I'm with Dosatron Dilution Solutions. I've been with the company for about 21 years. I uh, started out many, many years ago as a car wash operator. I owned a 12-bay and a 10-bay self-serve and uh, still using back then the Hydraminder and uh, Flowjet pump setup. And I found out about those trends through a friend who was a farmer and he was using them for medicating his livestock and uh, kind of bribed him out of a unit, put it in my car wash, worked tremendously, talked those to try into setting me up as their first car wash distributor in the Chicago area. I did that for about a year and a half, and then uh, they were kind enough to offer me a position with a great company, so I've been with them since. So that's just my background, so you know that I got a little bit of background in car wash experience. Um, today's webinar is going to be an open forum, so please, it's really all about um, communication and asking questions. I know your mics are muted, but you can see on there there's a chat box that you can type in questions as time goes along. Um, I have my colleagues here, Lori, Jason, and Sadie, to help with those questions. So they'll be monitoring that and passing those through to me as we go along. So please ask any questions that come to your mind. 
Uh, to double check that you can hear me good, the volume is right, my speakers and microphones working right, I would like to ask you just to type in where you're joining us from today, which state, which city makes no difference. We're not going to use this or sell it. It's basically just to make sure that we can see that everybody is getting getting the right uh, image and you can hear me properly. So if you could put that in, into that chat box, that'd be great. Hey, Craig, it's Lori. Uh, we do have one, a couple people here that are responding. We have Steve from Grimes, Iowa, and we have um, Kendra from uh, Hesperia, California, Jeff from Indianapolis. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you all, welcome to you all. Um, I think it was Steve from Grimes out in Ryko country. Welcome to you. Uh, so it looks like it's working, so I guess we can get started here. Um, I wanted to start out by just basically um, explaining how the dosatron works. For those of you that aren't that familiar with it, um, it is not a venturi, so people confuse it with that quite often. It's a positive displacement um, proportional injector. Inside the dosatron is a piston, this piston is the exact same out of all the D14 models. The big difference is down at the plunger size, the diameter of the plunger to draw more or less volume of concentrate. But this piston is inside of the unit. Um, basically what happens is you don't need any electricity or air to drive the unit. There's no external power needed. It's actually the flow of the water through the unit, that same water that you're using to mix your cool, I'm sorry, your, um, your car wash soap to its uh, working concentration is the energy that actually drives this piston. So as that flow goes through the unit, this piston's moving up and down in a vertical stroke. This plunger is riding inside of this stem. So as it's in the upstroke, it's acting just like a hypodermic syringe, but instead of a needle at the bottom of the syringe, we have a hose that's going down into your concentrate container. So that's creating the vacuum to draw it up, bring it through the flowing water, mix it and dispense it directly out to the bay. So that's kind of the idea of how it works. Um, I would just ask a quick question. We'll just, are there any questions yet? Anybody have any questions on how it works or anything related? Hey, Craig, it's Lori. Hey, Lori. Um, hey, do you, uh, do you need one of these for each bay? That's a great question, and I get asked that quite often. Uh, no, you do not. You need one of these for each chemical. So, I mean, your typical self-serve might have, what, five or six, maybe seven chemicals. So you're going to need one for each chemical. But these can serve anywhere from a single bay up to 10 bays. And the difference there comes in in the size of the solenoid manifold. So I don't know. Hopefully you can see this. On this one, we have the air manifold on this side. We have the product manifold on this side. We have four solenoids. So that means we're serving a four-bay car wash. So no, you don't need one for each each um, bay. And also, uh, we have some people that want to know how long do these last? They last longer than I wish they did because I don't sell as many. <laughs> no, we have units in service for literally, you, you could say decades. Um, I have units that people talk to me about from when I first started with the company that they still have in their car washes. Um, it's really a matter of service, maintenance, and things like that, um, and we can get into that if there's questions after we finish up here on maintenance, but um, the units last forever. I mean, they've been kind of coined the name, the set it forget and forget it injector, um, so they, they really do last a very long time. So if there aren't any other questions right now, maybe we can just jump over to what's the benefit to you as the car wash operator to switch from a hydraminder um, low jet pump to a dosatron jason if you could put that image up there we go perfect all right so there's a typical hydraminder setup you're all familiar with these you have the tank you have the float that controls the flow through the hydraminder you have the hose that goes down to your concentrate barrel and the water supply coming in the back. That unit has, let's just go through the downfalls that we're all aware of. And I'm not here to beat up the competition, but as operators, we've all experienced it. Um, the flow, it's happened to me, and that's what really prompted me to make a change a long time ago. 
had a brand new 55 gallon drum of wax, uh, brought it in, set it up, went home, came back the next morning, the drum is completely empty. And why? Because that float cracked and split and allowed water to get in, filled it up, sunk, and just pumped it all out onto the floor, to the floor drain. That's frustrating. Um, the other thing is the orifice tips. Obviously, the orifice tips are what control the volume of chemistry that's going through that um, venturi. You're limited because you only get that one bag of orifice tips. So I, this isn't a proper example. I don't even remember what the tip sizes are anymore because I haven't used them so long. But let's say that you're shooting because you want to put on a 250 to 1 ratio of a given chemical. This is just a random example. But your orifice tip sizes are 200 to 1 or say 175 to 1 or you know 275, 300 to 1. You're forced to compromise. So now you're trying to decide, well, which is the best one that I can use? Where's the closest I can get to where I need to be? Um, that's a big disadvantage. And that's addressed with the system also. I'll get into that in just a second. Um, you know, the holding tanks eat up all kinds of space. Uh, not, not all of them are uh, wall mounted like this. Some of the OEMs, if you use the OEM systems, use massive stainless steel tanks that take up a lot of floor space and what's typically a relatively small equipment room. Uh, again, that's addressed because of those strands going to eliminate all your, all your tanks and your all mounted tanks. Um, the flow jet pump. Flow jet pump is often used to move that mixed chemical from that tank out to the bays. Um, your busiest day of the year, what's happening? That flow jet is just going because people are washing like crazy and you're happy because you're making money and everything is going well. And all of a sudden the flow jet freezes. I mean, literally freezes. That's from the moisture that's going through that flow jet causing it to ice up. And unfortunately it happens again on your busiest day of the year, which is the worst time for any of that to happen. The dosatron is going to address all those issues. Okay, so your unit, as I was explaining, is driven by city water pressure. So on this one, you see here you have the uh, 80 micron filter, and this would be your incoming water from your city line. That water is following its down. You've got a water pressure regulator here. That pressure regulator is very important to be able to control your chemical mixture versus your air pressure. You want to control that chemistry, particularly on foam brush and foaming applications like that, so you don't get really wet, wet foam or really dry, blowing in the air type of foam. Then you have the injector itself. There's three different injectors that we offer. There's a 50 to 1 to 500 to 1, which is going to cover probably the vast majority of the chemistry that you're going to use. We have a 10 to 100 to 1, which is typically going to be used on like wheel and tire cleaner, uh, bug spray, things of that nature. And then we have one that's primarily going to be used on wax, and it's a 333 all the way up to 3,000 to 1 injector. So that's for your super concentrates, your ultra lean concentrates, um, like, like wax. And then, of course, you have the solenoids going out. So the Venturi tips, another big pitfall with the hydraminders, are addressed right here. And I know, I'm, I apologize that we can't get this closer to show you this, but on this stem is a scale. On this particular one, it's the 50 to 500 to 1 model. That scale is shown in graduated increments on the face. It's laser engraved right on the face. So to make your adjustment for your chemical strength, all you do is turn this stem up or down, and there's an index arrow that you just line up with what your desired chemical concentration is. So it's really simple. You can dial it in. It's a threaded stem, so we like to call it infinitely adjustable because if you're in that position where you know, you're not stuck between this tip and this tip and having to compromise here. You can actually tweak it and dial it in exactly to where you want it to be. Another big, uh, um, excuse me, another big advantage to the unit again is the um, opening of wall space. This is a wall mounted system. As you can see here, um, this is going to eliminate that massive tank. It's going to eliminate the big stainless steel tanks if, uh, if that's what you're running. Um, it's also what we call modular. So what we did is we put a, a uh, hose on this with a barb on the end. So again, your city water is coming in here. It's being directed down to this unit. Uh, let's say that you buy one of these and you put it in for foam brush, and I'm hoping that you will, and that you end up loving it so much that you want to do one for preso. You want to expand it. It's very easily expandable. Right here, we had a second ball valve coming out from your water supply here. Right now, it's turned off. You take that brand new pre-soak panel and you mount it right next to it here. 
take a hose and attach it to this barb and run it across to the inlet of the next panel. So it'll be cut connecting on that one on the next panel. Open your ball valve and your second panel is in, in operation, ready to roll. Now, oversimplifying a bit, you, to make the transition, there's a little bit involved, but let me just take, take a break real quick and see about questions. Anything out there, you guys? Hey there, Craig, it's Jason. Hey, Jason. Um, there are a couple of questions coming in here. So the first one, which is, where you're where you're heading right now is uh, what is it what does it actually take me to retrofit my system? Okay, another good question. So one of the first things that you're going to need to know is for that given chemical that you're working with, what's your target um, dilution rate? I mean, every one of the chemical companies is going to have it. It's going to be labeled on the drum. But let's use this again as the foam brush example because it's really set up like a foam brush system would. Uh, for four bays, four product, four air. Um, you look on your chemistry, it says that you need to run that chemical at 300 to 1. Again, picking a random example. Goes back to this. This one goes from 50 to 1 to 500 to 1. So you know this is the injector that you're going to use for that particular foam brush product. To change it over, again, you're gonna, the system's going to come in as you see it here, mounted on a convenient spot on the wall, bring in your water line to the inlet. So that water line is gonna come off the hydraminder that you're replacing. You already have a water line feeding the back of that hydraminder. You're just gonna disconnect it from there and use that same water source to supply the dositron. Then if you order the unit with the solenoids, which I would recommend you do, because I'm sure everybody aware also, when you start messing with solenoids that have been in use for 10 years, and as soon as you start messing around with them, things break loose, you get debris in there and stuff, you're better off just replacing them. So you can get it like this, pre-plumbed from our factory, pre-wired to the two solenoid manifolds. Um, so you're going to take the wires off your existing solenoids, if you're going to change to new ones, and you're just going to take those two wires per solenoid one at a time and move them over to this DIN rail to power this. Okay, so solenoid number one at the top, two, three, four, and on. If you're using your existing solenoids and you're not going to purchase these with the, with the unit, you're basically just going to take that discharge line that's coming off your flow jet pump that's connected to the bottom of your existing product solenoid manifold. And you're gonna replace that with a discharge line from the dosatron. So you've got your flow jet pump feeding your product solenoid. Now you have your dosatron feeding your product solenoid. And I mean, for the most part, that really is it. That's it, now you're ready to roll. I mean, the changeover, the retrofit is really simple. Sorry, I left off uh, attaching air here. On this particular one, we just have a quick connect, like a regular hose connection. You can use whatever you need to bring your, your air supply to it. But um, we even put 3 ace poly tube, push lock poly tube John Guest fittings on here. Um, that's just kind of what we standardized on, but we can change that or you can change it to whatever you're currently using to your, to your bays. Perfect, thanks Craig. So I have another really good question from Jeff. Um, he, his question relates to, so this thing right here is just for low pressure functions like foam brush and pre-soak, um, but he's also wondering, can it be used for high pressure functions um, like wax and detergent? Perfect. So what do you think? Jeff, thanks. I appreciate that. And what you're going to see or what you're probably seeing right now um, through CleanRight, they're promoting these as a modular low pressure system. Um, yes, the answer, short answer to your question is yes. They can be used for your high pressure soap and your high pressure wax. Um, ultimately, that would be everybody's goal, right? If you could have everything well mounted except your high pressure pump stand with your cat pumps, including your high pressure soap and wax. Uh, basically, what you're going to do on that type of a changeover, it's going to be a little bit more involved, but really not. It's the same thought process of changing over to low pressure. So your high pressure pump, let's say your, your cap pump for bay number one has coming into the inlet, normally it's gonna have your rinse, your soap and your wax with two solenoids there. And those solenoids are being fed from those giant tanks that are being, you know, they use a hydraminder to fill them up. Um, so when it calls for high pressure soap, that solenoid opens and it gravity feeds from that tank into the suction side of the cap pump. All we're gonna do is use a dosatron to pressure feed through that solenoid. So it won't be gravity feeding from the tank. You're gonna to go to this, you're gonna these are these are your solenoids, and you're just gonna have your connection to that solenoid 
feeding the suction side of the kit, 310, the general pump, whatever you're using for high pressure. So I checked with everybody and the pressure fed idea into a cat or, or general or whoever high pressure pump you're using is okay. I checked with all the manufacturers. They said no problem. I was a little concerned because I've heard people say oh, it washed the head out one thing or another and that's, that's not the case. Actually, they like the idea because if anything ever happens on that, um, on that gravity feed from the tank, a line gets plugged or something happens where it doesn't allow it to flow, it doesn't take long for you to wipe out a dry running cat pump. So hopefully that answered your question. All right, Craig, thanks a lot. No problem, thanks, Jason. So I guess we could just review here, again, the benefits to you as an operator, um, changing from a hydraminder to a dosatron. Okay, it's water, water supply here, uh, city water power, no air, no electricity, no external energy source. You're eliminating your air. Obviously, you're still going to have air here, the foam, but it's not driving the flow jet pump. So that compressor is running a whole lot less, and you're going to see a marked improvement in your electrical consumption costs. You have a positive displacement piston. So I guess I skipped over one thing. These things come to my head. Bear with me. I'm old. Um, so th let's use this example of bay number one foam brush. Somebody goes into bay number one, they turn on on the rotary switch foam brush. That number one solenoid opens at the same time the air solenoid opens to send the product and the air out to the foam generator. Somebody goes into bay number two and opens, and I'm sorry, turns on foam brush. So what's happened now is your flow or your demand is doubled from when it was just one bay to two bays. So what happens then is the speed of the piston stroke and the dosatron will double. So as flow, let's just say bay one was flowing one gallon a minute on foam brush. Somebody goes into bay number two, they turn that one on, now you're at two gallons a minute. This is gonna go twice as fast. And that's what maintains that proportional mixture of chemical concentrate to water. So as those bays open up, more water is flowing through, so it needs to pump more concentrate to keep that proportionality so the pump pumps faster. So it's automatically adjusting to changes in pressure and flow. Your Venturi's, not so much. I mean, everybody's aware of some of the pitfalls there as far as pressure goes. If your pressure fluctuates, you're going to get big swings in your, in your uh, mixed chemical going into your tank. Um, if pressure drops too low, I mean, I think 14 is the magic number that you need, but I could be wrong. But if it drops too low, it won't even create enough vacuum on that venturi to draw chemical and you're just filling that tank with water and watering down that whole, that whole tank. So again, that does not happen with the dosatron. Um, everything is pre-plumbed. You've got the modular expandable manifold. And uh, well, here's, here's one big one. I remember when I was running my washes, you know, you go to change your concentration with your orifice tip and the uh, foam brush soap, or now they've got tricolor soaps. And what happens is Friday night, like tonight, you're gonna go out to dinner with your wife, girlfriend, whatever your, your, your significant other, and uh, your hands are pink, blue, yellow, and all kinds of neat colors. It's, um, everybody's had that happen. This is no longer with, with the dosatron because you're not handling those tips. Aside from the fact that the super concentrated ones, that 300 to 3,000 to one dosatron, um, that orifice tip is like microscopic. So it's so easy to get some dirt or debris drawn up into that tip and it plugs the tip. And now you're, you know, if you're not there, nobody's at your wash as a self-serve and people are using the wax and you're getting no wax but water. Um, you know, everybody experienced that irate customer that ends up doing thousands of dollars worth of damage because they lost a dollar. So let me just pause there again and see what other questions, if we have any out there. We do, we do, Craig. Um, Steve. Uh, asked the question, and you actually just sort of went into this about, he just wants to know, do you have customers that are using triple foam brush with this? Okay, that's another good one. Thanks, Steve. Um, so again, one chemical, I'm sorry, one dosatron per chemical. So can a triple foam brush be used? It can. Um, you're going to have to use three different dosatrons, one for each color. And what we don't supply, though, is you'll need the alternating timer. 
So you'll need to have an alternating timer to go from, you know, the red dosatron panel to the blue dosatron panel. Um, but yeah, people have used them. Um, not a not a problem. But you do need one for each color. How about uh, the amount of bays? So I see you got four bays there, Craig. How many bays can we go up to? So we can go as low as, as one bay. So you just have one, one solenoid on each side, one product, one air, or maybe just one product if you're not foaming. Um, this is four. Uh, we can get do as many as 10. So this model, that these D14 series that we're using on these panels uh, will operate as low as 0 0.05 gallons per minute which is, I mean, you're, you're not even washing a car at that flow rate, but it will, it is enough flow to actually move the piston up to a maximum of 14 gallons per minute. So we did some math. I did it just from my own experience running a 12 bay and a 10 bay. And 10 bays is about where we max out. I mean, you, you're good with 10 bays. Um, your, your manifold is going to be a lot larger. It's going to have 10 solenoids on each one. Uh, beyond 10 bays, then we have to start looking at things like making sure that you've got really good city water supply pressure, your main isn't undersized, and all the things that you would normally have to deal with on a large car wash. But uh, yeah, so we're one to 10 bays is the answer to that. Thanks, Craig. Hey, I have a, I have a couple more questions that I think are really good questions. Um, the first that I want to um, bring up is uh, from Jeff, and he, he'd like for you to explain a little bit about how the WEEP system works. Um, or is there an alcohol purge? So I, I summarized your question a little bit, Jeff, but Craig has a lot of experience living up in uh, the great windy city of uh, Chicago. Winter washing, isn't it great? It's, it's good when you're making money anyway. Yes, great question. Um, so keep in mind that the dosatron system is just a replacement for the hydrominer system. So if you're using a wheat miser to keep all your guns from freezing, all that's going to stay exactly the same. Your solenoids are going to stay exactly the same, okay, unless you move them over to here. So that system is really remaining untouched. It, it all works seamlessly together. On foam brush, if you're using an ethanol-based soap, um, that's different depending on how you purchase it. I mean, some people buy a winter blend foam brush with the ethanol in it. Um, that's ideal. All you're going to have to do then is on your foam brush manifold, when you're going from summer to winter, you may have to change your concentration just a bit. Um, I, I used to do mine a little bit different, but uh, you may have to adjust the concentration a bit for the winter months. If you're mixing the ethanol into the like summer blend of bone brush concentrate, um, that really has nothing to do with the dosatron. I mean, as far as any compatibility issues, it's not a problem. Uh, we run in many other industries. Uh, I'm doing primarily industrial applications across the board. Uh, to give you an example, in food processing, processing excuse me, sanitation and hygiene applications, um, one of the aggressive chemicals they use is uh, parasitic acid. Um, very aggressive, and we use the very same injector on, on those types of applications. So chemical compatibility with the ethanol that you'd be adding to your foam brush isn't, isn't a concern at all. All right, thanks, Jeff. Hopefully that answers it. Um, and then another question that I think is uh, on a lot of people's minds is what, what kind of maintenance do we really recommend for the dosatron? Okay, another good one. I think I had mentioned earlier uh, when somebody asked how long they last and I said too long. Um, maintenance is, is important. Let's face it, everything needs a certain amount of maintenance. I mean, you wouldn't drive your car for years on end without changing the oil or something's going to get. The dosatron is going to require a little bit of maintenance too. Um, Generally speaking, if you look at our website and our published literature, um, our YouTube channel, I'm going to jump back to that in a second, but um, everything that we put out says to do seal change annually. Uh, we have to make that statement about the annual seal change because some of the other industries that we work in aren't necessarily using really good quality water as the dry water for the system. Some of them are actually pumping out of a pond or a river to irrigate or to water livestock. Um, in which case it's very important to do those seal changes because the water quality is not that great. Generally speaking in car wash though, I can comfortably say that you probably should do the seal changes once every two years. If you're a super high volume wash, that might be a shorter interval, but good for you. It's worthwhile, right? If you have to do the maintenance because you're selling so many washes, it, it's wearing the equipment out. 
Um, in that kit is just a couple seals. Uh, basically, this seal that I'm showing you right here is the plunger seal. Again, remember that's what's creating the vacuum to draw the concentrate up so you can mix with your water. That's acting like a piston ring on a car. So as it's moving up and down in that in that injection stem, um, it's going to wear. Even though it's lubricated with any of your chemical, it's going to wear after a certain period of time. The symptom that you're going to see is, you know, hey, I've had this thing set at 250 to 1 for two years now, and I haven't had to touch it. It's worked great. But now I'm starting to see, and normally it's going to be color. So if you're, if you're using pink foam, for example, it's not as bright pink as it used to be. So then you start testing your, your, your uh, solution, you know, whether you titrate or however you test it, and you come to find out that it's still set at 250 to 1, but you're getting, you know, 300 to 1 or 325 to 1 out of it. That's the symptom of this plunger, uh, plunger seal ring or plunger ring uh, showing some wear. And that's just a square O-ring that you pinch off and you pop the new one on. So to do the maintenance, I'll do it real quick, but I want to tell you that Jason, who's on with us today, has done um, YouTube videos for almost every model injector that we make, and he's done a great job. He takes you through step by step of what we're about to talk about. It's a really great resource, particularly the first time you do it. Um, I'd say the first time somebody does a seal change, first off, we tell you no tools. Everything is O-ring sealed, so it's just by hand. Um, it might take you 20 minutes to half hour. Once you've done the first one, um, I would say it shouldn't take you any more than 15 minutes to do a complete seal change and have the unit back up and running. And again, Jason's uh, videos are a great resource for that because you can bring it up on your phone. You can hit play, pause it, do that thing, hit play, pause it. So it's a great thing. Um, but generally speaking, you're going to turn off your water to do the maintenance. Obviously, turn off your water. I've done it. I know. Press the uh, button on the top. That's just a bleed valve. It's going to bleed the pressure off the system. You're going to take this dome bell housing top and unthread it. It's threaded to the bottom half of the body here. You're going to unthread it, pull it straight off. Once you do, as you look down inside of there, you're going to see it from this angle. So you're looking down, you see the top of the piston. You reach inside, pull that piston straight up and out of the body. Okay, so now you have access to that plunger seal. You can pinch that off, put that one on, put the new one on. Set that piston down for the moment. Then you're going to come back over here. Underneath this nut is a stationary seal. That's the seal that um, seals it from the body to the stem. You're going to take this nut off. You're going to pull that stem straight down from the body, and you'll see that O-ring in there. Again, you just peel the O-ring off, put the new one back in the groove. Down at the bottom here, where this hose attaches to the bottom of the dosatron, is actually a check valve. So most other products that I'm familiar with use a foot valve. Um, foot valves tend to fail at a certain point in time. Uh, we're using a spring-loaded check valve at the top of the suction hose as opposed to the bottom, kind of like holding your thumb on the top of the straw to hold the prime in the suction hose. That check valve assembly is, it comes in the kit as a complete, completely assembled item. I'm going to try to do this without looking silly, but there you go. So now I think you can see the barb where this is attached to. That's the check valve assembly. So when you come to that part of the kit, you're just going to unscrew the nut that holds the check valve in. You're going to pull that check valve assembly straight out. It's going to come out. And you're going to pop the new one in. So I mean, the, the seal change is, like I say, it's, it's crazy simple. And uh, you get it done quick and get back in business. Hey, Craig, it's Lori. Yeah. We're we're starting to wind down here. It's it's uh, almost it's just right around 30 minutes, but we have two more questions for you. Great. Uh, okay. One is so you were just talking uh, about how Jason has a whole bunch of videos on all the different dosatrons. How do we know which dosatron that we need? So yeah, again, so when you're changing over from one chemical or your from a chemical that you're running through a hydrometer to a dosatron. It's just a matter of knowing what the dilution rate is that you normally run that chemical at currently. And uh, you know you can look at the tip side, the tip color, and then refer to that little paper chart that you get in that bag and it'll tell you what the dilution rate is for that particular tip. Um, you're gonna usually know what you run each chemical at as far as your dilution rate, and that's gonna guide you towards sizing the dosatron. Um, 
at the end of the thing here, the presentation, they're going to put up my contact information, um, my cell phone, my email. I'm here. I, car wash is my thing. I've been doing it for my entire life, just about. And uh, you know, operators like sharing sharing information and helping each other out. So please don't hesitate to call me, email me, text me, carrier pigeon me. I don't care. Well, we can we can try to guide you for that first one just so you get that comfort level up. That's great. That's awesome, Craig. Um, just one last question here, I think. I don't see any others. The, the last question is, um, do we have installers? So we do not. Um, we have some distributors on ground um, that also do um, service and installation. You would have to check with who it is that you locally work with. Uh, Self-serve operators in general, at least from my experience, um, Clean Right, who is helping us out this month with a great promotion. Just want to throw that out there. Um, they're taking their already very reasonably discounted price and knocking another 10% off of that on the Dosatron systems from the beginning of October to the end of the month. So if you decide that you'd like to try one, it'd be a great time to try one um, and get things going. Uh, I just uh, just kind of lost it there. Lori, help me. <laughs> you were telling people to call Clean Right. All right. right. Thank you. Yes, call Clean Right for your pricing. Um, they're going to be able to help you out with any of that. And uh, again, though, if you if you have questions as far as sizing uh, the unit, you're welcome to call me. You're good to go, Craig. You have answered all. I haven't seen any questions in a few minutes, so you're good to go. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody. I really do appreciate your time. I know it's Friday. I know it's uh, almost beer 30. Um, so enjoy the weekend. Thanks again for your time. And uh, let me know if I can help you with anything. There you go. There's my contact. Hopefully I'll be hearing from you. Great, thank you everyone. We hope that you were able to write down Craig's information and that you took a lot away from this. We will be sending out a post-show e-blast, like Craig said, with this information and this webinar. So be sure to reach out to us with any questions that you have that you may that you have forgotten about. Have a great weekend.